now that we've got products and customers, we are in a position to create a complete sales order. Remember earlier, we were not able to enter a product ID because we didn't have any data for products. We've done that, so let's go and complete that process. Okay, so now we've got the products. I created two products. Okay, so and we have the product IDs. We can now go back and enter the sales order. So here I go and click on sales order. I come to our sales order page. Okay, and then I enter the date, enter the customer ID. And then here I'm now in a position to enter the product. Uh, product ID because I've got two products one and two so I've entered product ID 2 right here okay now I added one product I want to add another product so I click on this and click create uh, add, click on enter add row it gives me a blank row I enter some quantity and uh, product ID 1 this time I save that and that also succeeds because product ID 1 is also valid. Okay, so now we didn't get our referential integrity constraint issue. Well, at this point, we're almost done, but there's one little point that we really need to take account of, otherwise, the application will not be very usable. And uh, we will be learning how to do list of values, and I'll shortly explain to you why we need list of values and how to create them. Okay, so here we see customer ID 1. Okay, now it's not a great idea for to ask people to remember customer IDs, right? So I'm creating a sales order. I need to go and say, who's the customer? Well, I have to go back to the customer table, find out the ID and come and enter the ID here. That's not very nice. Okay, so what we would like to do is to allow people to select a customer, right? So instead of just being a field where you enter a value, ideally, this should be a drop down where you drop it down. And it shows you the list of customer names, not IDs, because you don't you don't relate to people by their IDs. You hardly remember the IDs, but you know names, right? So you want to see a list of customer names from which you select the customer. And then you want the system to automatically insert the corresponding ID. We don't want to deal with that ID at all. Okay, so that's the idea. That's what we are trying to do. And the thing that causes us to, helps us to, create this drop down list that is what is called a list of values okay so once again uh, what is required is for us to go back uh, edit the page okay and uh, we we don't need to really edit the page I, I think that's not needed here right so a uh, list of values again as i said earlier while creating a sales order the list of value will allow us to use a drop down to pick a customer we need not remember customer ids Okay, so now and similarly, we need the same feature for products. So what we'll go and do is now we'll first go and create list of values for both products and customers. Okay, so again, we go back to our beginning of our application. Okay, the, the root of our application. And then this time we're going to select shared components, right? List of value is a shared component. Once you create a list of values, you can use it on many different pages. Okay, so that is why it's a shared component. It's a component that you can share across multiple pages. So click on shared components, and then here you see here uh, other components, and within that you see list of values. Okay, so click on list of values, and then it's showing you now all the lists of values you already have. Of course, you have nothing, so you're not seeing any list of values, just like with the pages and with everything else. So again, we go and create, uh, click create, okay? This time it allows us to create a list of values, okay? So remember, we're going to create two lists of values, customer and product, okay? I'm saying create a list of values from scratch. That's what we're going to do. And we select from scratch and then click next. And this time I'm creating a list of values for products first. I call it product, L-O-V. This is just a name I gave, I used underscore. And of course, as we already said, this is a dynamic list of values. Okay, dynamic list of values in the sense that, remember, this is a real application, right? So new products will keep getting added as time passes, right? You don't want to go and have to change the list of values every time. But this dynamic list of values 
Today, it will show all the products that are there today. You know, when in an application, you go pull down the drop down, it will show you the products that exist today. Tomorrow, somebody adds a new product. Tomorrow, if you go and click on that, all the products will still come up, meaning the new product will also come up. That is why this is called as a dynamic list of value. Okay. And so we call it product LOV and then we uh, click on uh, next. Okay, and then again, it wants you to tell the table from which it's going to create the list of values. Okay, so it says table and the workspace name is good, leave it alone. And here you select product, right? Because we're creating a list of values for products. So you drop down, the, uh, drop down this and then select product. Again, it may take a little time. Uh, and then after that, click next. And then it says, the list of values, when somebody drops down the list of values on a form, what is it that should be displayed? After all, the product table has could potentially have many columns, right? Which column should it display? So here we are saying the display column is product name. Okay, that is when somebody is trying to enter a value for a product ID, they pull down the drop down menu, you will show them a list of product names. Okay, when they select a particular product, then you're telling the system, the return value is the product ID. In other words, let the customer select a product, but you put in the product ID in that particular field because product ID is the foreign key that's going to go into the table, right? So that's what these are. The return column will typically be an ID and the display column will be something meaningful that you will display from that object, okay? Then when you say create, it'll do the job. It'll create the list of values and it'll come back to this page and show you the new LOV that you just created, product LOV. Okay, so you can do the same thing, okay, for customer as well. Okay, but now what we are doing is we are, uh, we want to, uh, I assume that we similarly created the customer LOV as well. I have not shown the process, but assume, let's assume that the customer LOV has also been created. So now going back to our master detail form, right? We want here, instead of the customer ID, we want a drop down to show up here. And when I click on the drop down, it will show me all the customers and I'll select a customer. Similarly, I will pull this down. It will show a list of product names and I'll select a particular product name. Okay, so how do you achieve that? We Let's assume that we have the two LOVs. In order to attach the LOVs to this master detail form, right? what I want to do here is edit the page. Okay, and here uh, we want to select uh, first, notice that the foreign key column is the customer ID, right? So this is in the master portion of the uh, page, right? So you click on sales order, open up the uh, columns, select customer ID because customer ID is the field which we want to replace with an LOV. So once you click on it, right here, no notice this, you, what you want to do here is uh, to replace this. The name is customer ID, right? Now here, instead of just a regular display, it says pop-up LOV, okay? So we want a pop-up list of values. Of course, we need to tell it which list of values to use. So we want to use the customer LOV. We need to specify that. In order to specify that, we need to scroll down on this page a little bit. Scroll down in this area. And once you scroll down in this area, at some point you will come to uh, this uh, uh, list of values here. See list of values. Okay, there type you want to say shared component and which list of values is it? Customer LOV. You can select that. Once you click uh, shared component, it will show this field and it will populate this. So you drop it down and select customer LOV. And that's it, you're done. You can do save and run, okay? So at this point, you notice the customer ID earlier was one, but now it's not, sh it's not showing one, it is instead showing the customer's name, okay? That is because there is an LOV attached to this particular field. That's why it knows that it's supposed to display the customer name, whereas internally, it is keeping the customer ID, okay? So we need to do the same thing for product as well, right? This is of course, we are selecting it. I dropped it down, I see the list of customers. 
I can select a particular customer to make a change for it, for that customer. Okay, so we need to do the same thing for product. So once again, we come here, we edit the page. This time we select product ID from this uh, order item because product ID is part of order item. And then we select it and do the same thing, right? See, we say pop up LOV and then we we'll scroll down as before and then uh, fill up the list of values column. This time shared component, we select the product LOV. And then save and run. Right, we save and run here. And then here now you see that if you double if you click on this particular field, uh, double click on this particular field, you're able to pull down this uh, drop down and select a particular product. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's all there is to building a complete application from start to finish. Now remember when you, uh, I showed you LOVs only in the context of uh, only in the context of master detail pages, right? However, what I want you to do is to use LOVs wherever there are foreign keys. Okay. Uh, so in our example, LOVs were required only for master detail forms. Right. Foreign keys were there only in master detail, uh, associative entity related things. Okay. But there could be foreign keys in other parts of your application as well. In fact, whenever there is a one to many relationship, you'll have a foreign key. Okay. So what I want you to do in your project is for every foreign key, I want you to use an LOV, right? Nobody should ever have to go and enter an ID by hand. That's the whole point. Okay. So once you take care of that, you've done, you're finished. You've built an application from start to finish that you'll complete the project and then just go submit the project as per the requirements laid out in the project document.